The language of Quran, easier than English, lesson 15. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, we are on the last lesson of our first book. Inshallah, after this, we're going to go to book two, where we will begin to look at verbs and also further develop our knowledge of verbal sentences. As a quick reminder for you and myself, Alhamdulillah, where we began and where, how far we have gone. Right in at the beginning when we did the mapping of Arabic series, we talked about in Arabic there are only three types of words and we started with the ismun and we said that it had four properties. In, in lesson number two, we reminded ourselves of the seven categories of ism that were definite. And this today's lesson is about one category of that, which is the relative noun or in English it is called the relative pronoun. Now, just going through what we have learned so far, as if you call, remember that in lesson number five, we'll study the pronouns. Lesson number 12, we looked at the demonstrative nouns. And in lesson number two, we started making sentences just with the definite article or the definite nouns that we learned. Vocative, we will learn later, inshallah ta'ala, but also related to a definite, which we already done in lesson 10 and 11, where we looked at an indefinite word becoming definite because it's linked to mudaf mudaf ilayhi structure for example his pen qalamuhu his pen is definite even though the word qalam is indefinite on its own but when it belongs to a specific person it becomes definite so you can see here how well this cross has been structured in order to give you the maximum yield in your learning of arabic also in the mapping session i reminded you of not to worry about vocabulary look by the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the sets of words in the Arabic language and particularly Quran that we have learned, but the hu huge amount of yield in vocabulary that we, we've received. First of all, again, we learned the Muslim table. If you remember, we did that early back in lesson number four. So by the end of lesson number four, we got to the point where we could recognize the four properties of most of the noun plus that we came across. Then in lesson five, we did the pronouns, which is 1400 times almost in the Quran. Then we did the attached pronouns and lesson eight, lesson nine, lesson 10 and so, so on. Even in lesson number 13, we went through them, inshallah. And we're going to see them again when we go through the verbs also. Then in lesson 12, we did the uh, pointing words. Then now in this lesson, we're going to do the demonstrative uh, relative nouns, relative nouns, I should say. And they're about 3,500 times in the Quran. Lesson number eight and lesson number nine gave us the Murakkab Jari, which is almost 13,000 times in the Quran. And of course, Inna and our sisters, we did in lesson number 13. And for book two, we've left the derived noun, nouns and verbs, which will give us lots of patterns, inshallah ta'ala, going up to 20,000 plus. So vocabulary learning has never been your challenge uh, when it comes to understanding Quran. Allah has made it easy. All we have to do is spend a little bit of time learning the common grammatical structures. And again, if you've forgotten that, please go back and look at the mapping of Arabic uh, video that I did right at the beginning on this playlist, inshallah. So this is the map. And Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, we know what a descriptive phrase is. And I hope and pray by now you are some of an expert at this. We've done the demonstrative phrase, pointing phrase in lesson 12. We've done the Murakkab Jari, lesson 8 and lesson 9. We've done the Idafa 10 and 11. And of course, conjunctional phrase is very simple. One copies the other. We've done that quite a few times already. We've already done significant amount of work on Jumla Ismiya. And of course, Jumla Fi'liya we only used as examples and I've left that for detailed study in book two. You're already familiar with the Ismun, Alhamdulillah, and its four properties. And you've already done quite a few huruf. And of course, verbs have been left for book two. So this map that we showed right at the beginning of your journey, you can now see how much progress we have made by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, whatever good that has come is because from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy, we thank and praise Allah for all the blessings he has bestowed upon us. And of all the blessings he has bestowed upon us, the greatest of the blessings is the blessing of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us firm in our faith and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the highest of the rewards and forgiveness and mercy for all the efforts that we make in order to understand the Quran. What is a relative noun? In English, we are, there's a category called relative pronouns, very similar to the one when we saw, for example, 
uh, uh, demonstrative pronouns in English. They call them, we call them demonstrative or pointing nouns or words of pointing. Simplicity in Arabic, because they are actually a category of an ism, we will translate them as relative nouns. What they are is that they link two clauses together, one to the preceding one. That's all. As an example, all that glitters is not gold. Now, of course, the word THAT, for example, I can ask a question, what is that? So the, it can be used in many ways in the English language, but one of the ways is as a relative noun. Other words that can be used, who, whom, whose, which, that, etc. So these are relative nouns. They're available in English as well as in Arabic. In Arabic, particularly for Quranic studies, they're very important as they're very frequently used in the Quran. So let me give you some example of how they work. Now, the relative noun is used to connect previously mentioned definite ism which, uh, with that which follows. Now, what follows can, can be anything, but in Arabic, this is called silatul mausul. Now, silatul mausul can be a sentence, nominal or verbal, or it can be shibhu jumla. Now, if you shibhu jumla, if you remember, what was it? Mudaf, mudaf ilayhi, if the mudaf is an adverb, or jar majroor. So this is the bit that it can connect to. Silatul Masul is essential to clarify the meaning. So what I mean by that, if I say to you, Ar-Rajulu al the man who, we're not clarifying anything here, just saying the man who. In the same, same way I can say, Al-Kitabu al the book which. What about that book which? So I'm not clarifying. So something comes after it, which is called Silatul Masul, which you can see on the screen. So something will come after it, which will clarify what I mean. So for example, here in the first example I have, the man whose father is an imam came. Long sentence, but you can see the idea. So, ar rajulu alladhi abuhu imamun. So I'm giving a bit more information about the one who. That's basically how it works. Abuhu imamun on its own is actually a sentence. His father is an imam. His abuhu imamun, it's his father is an imam. A very easy sentence, inshallah, you can see. Okay. Qara'tul kitaba. Okay. I read the book. I read the book. Alladhi, which is, or the one which. Ala al maktabi, which is on the table or on the desk. So I've read the book, which is on the desk. So you can see here, here, ala al maktabi is, of course, our jar and majroor. So you can use many different ways and it's used in the Quran in many complex different ways. And just to make it very clear in this lesson, I'm not going to go through all the details because significant number of times that it's used primarily is used with verbs or verbal sentences, which we are covering later on. And then inshallah, we'll do an advanced lesson on this as it is very, very significant um, importance when it comes to Quranic text and of course, by extension, Hadith. So let's took, look at the example we saw earlier. Ja'a, you will already know, means somebody came, he came. Ja'a alladhi, who came? So alladhi now is your ismun mausul. It's an ism mausul. And the verb ja'a fi'lun is your verb. I hope you can see that inshallah. Abuhu mudaf mudaf ilayhi. Abuhu mudaf mudaf ilayhi. Imamun is your khabar. So abuhu becomes a mubtada. Imamun becomes the khabar and we have a jumla ismiya. All of that is connecting back to alladhi. That together is the doer of the verb. Who came? The father, sorry, whose father is an imam. Okay, came. That's the person we're talking about. So quickly review with the example alladhina. Alladhina means those who. It's a plural one used for masculine plural. And they literally are nouns of the connected. If this is the literal translation of the um, al ismul mausul, the connected noun or the noun of the connected, and they are connect, they connect two parts together, as as we have already seen. More importantly, they are a category of ism. They will have the four properties. As far as the property of arab is concerned, they are considered to be mabni. They do not change their ending. Please refer to lesson number seven for more detail. And of course, lesson number two, we mentioned that they are always definite. They're one of the seven categories of the asma or ism that are definite. And this is so far what we know about them. And inshallah, this is the definition of what they are. And what comes after their usage is called silatul mausul. And it can be a complete sentence 
or it can be shibu jumla. So it can be jumla ismiya, jumla fi'liya, and of course it can be jar majroor or it can be dharf mudaf, mudaf ilayhi. That's all you need to know, inshallah ta'ala. The right hand side bits you should already be very familiar with. Jumla ismiya you should be familiar with, but jumla fi'liya we are still learning, inshallah ta'ala. We are at a very early stage. So this map shows you. Even though they look complex, but if you break them down, there it really isn't that much of a complexity, inshallah, which you will see in forthcoming lessons after we studied the verb. So again, example here, you can see Sirat Alladina An'amta Alayhim. I hope you don't need me to remind you that this is from Surah Al-Fatiha. And of course, you can see the the relative noun there pointed out very, very clearly. And An'amta is actually a verb and it's got the doer. An'amta, you bestowed favors, alayhim, which is your jar and majroor. So you can see very clearly from Surah Al-Fatiha, alladhina, here is the relative noun, relative noun, and it is connecting an'amta alayhim to something before. And of course, here we can see sirata, sirata, the path of those you have bestowed favors upon them. The path of those whom, upon whom you have bestowed your favors. So now you can see the verb and the doer connects to the alayhim to complete my jumla fi'liya. And this is the most common way they're used with jumla fi'liya. Again, we will reserve that for later lessons, inshallah ta'ala. And the ism mausul and the silatul mausul join together to complete a structure. So you can see here another one uh, from the Quran. Qad aflahal mu'minun. Certainly will the believers be, have succeeded. Alladhina then comes up and gives more detail about the believers. We can see here now whom fi, whom they fi in salatihim. Please note salah is prayer. Salatihim, their prayer, khashi'oon, who are humbly submissive. So you can see here now exactly what we explain later. The whom is now acting as my mubtada and jar majroor. You can see here fi salatihim is coming together. And that is your, and the salatihim is mudaf mudaf ilayhi. And you should remember this every time an ism has an attached pronoun, it will be mudaf mudaf ilayhi. So you can see here the structures, alhamdulillah, very, very clear. You got your mubtada and you got your khabar and with the jar majroor structure in the, in the, uh, before it and the khabar coming afterwards. So mubtada plus the khabar is your sila coming together. So you can see very, very, clear structure here how they are being used and this is what i try to explain right from the beginning if you go to arabic and go straight to the more complex structures you'll never make progress learn the easy bits first and inshallah ta'ala we will be able to put them together and then find the connection and of course understand the text correctly and more importantly for us english speakers understand it in the context of the english language now there are two types of relative nouns in Arabic. Now I explained earlier in English that those those who whom these can be used for other purposes also and there are words in the Arabic language that can be used for multiple purposes but there are certain words in Arabic which are specifically only used as relative nouns and they are alladhi alladhina we'll see the full set shortly but alladhi alladhina are called specific meaning they're not used as anything else Whereas other sets, which is like ma and man, which we will see in this lesson, inshallah, are, can be used for other things. And ma, we've already seen quite a few times for negation is one, and we will see it right throughout. It's used a number of ways. One of them is a relative noun. One of the usage is a relative noun. Just like the word what in English, if I say, what are you doing? That's a question. But if I say, I'm doing what you told me to do, so that is no longer a question, the word what here. I'm responding. So you can see here different uses of words and inshallah through examples and practice you will get them. But at the moment note there are specific words which are only used as relative nouns and alladhi, alladhina is the most common and then we have other words like ma and man. So let's look at the two examples on the screen. The one who prays is a believer. Alladhi yusalli mu'minun. Alladhi yusalli mu'minun. Yusalli is the verb here. So the one who prays, yusalli, or is praying, and depends on the context you translate, is a believer, or a believer prays. This is another way of translating that. He knows what is in the heavens and the earth, and this is a Quranic example. Ya'lamu, he knows. This is a verb. 
ma whatever and this is now your relative noun ma whatever is your relative nouns which you can see here inshallah ta'ala on the screen so what here is the word ma so ma what ya'lamu ma fi samawati fi harf of jar and you can see this samawat which is the plural heavens samawati wal ardi so he knows whatever is in the heavens and the earth so ma is now here being used as a relative noun the relative nouns specific let me quickly go through the table of relative nouns there really isn't a lot to worry about you don't have to memorize them all and i'll explain to you why the singular masculine one is alladhi and it is exactly the same in rafa nasab and jar so they are mabni they do not change their ending very similar to what we saw in lesson 12 with the relative nouns the duals on the other hand always change in arabic so alladhani is the rafa version alladhaini alladhaini exactly the same ending of all duals that we've come across the plural pointing to masculine or referring to masculine i should say is alladhina and this is the one we saw in surah al-fatiha alladhina and again it's exactly the same in rafa nasab and jar so the dual version like all other dual version nasab and jar is the same but in rafa we have a different version and for the um, singular and the plural is the same one whether it is rafa nasab or jar now this these are all for masculine let us look at feminine feminine is allati and it's exactly the same in rafa nasab and jar and of course the dual version is it also changing and you can see here allatani allataini allataini and the plural is allati allai and it's mabni the both of them do not change now why i told you not to worry about too many of them all you need to know is the singular the singular is used 304 times in the quran the duals have been used only twice the masculine duals only twice the plural has been used 1059 times the feminine singular has been used 68 times and the plural has been used nine times and four times so if you were to learn only the masculine singular and plural alladhi alladhina that will nearly get you to nearly 1350 odd words of al quran you can add the feminine singular allati on top and that will get you 1400 words plus of the quran you really don't need to spend a lot of time memorizing this list because the feminine duals do not are not used in the quran at all and the masculine dual is only used twice so this shows you only three words you need alladhi alladhina and allati that's it for the bulk of them the rest inshallah when you see them you'll recognize them as long as you learn the rules related to the others you will be 100 percent flying through this lesson alladhi the one who we're going to look at Alladhi first, very briefly, just a few examples, inshallah. Alladhi has been used in the Quran 304 times. Its use is predominantly with singular masculine aqil. It can also be used with ghayru aqil. Again, I'm sure you remember, aqil is humans, um, includes jinns and angels. Ghayru aqil is everything else. So let's look at two examples of its use. Ar-rajulu, the man, of course, that is a masculine singular. Alladhi jalisun. Now the man who is sitting is a scholar. The man who is sitting over there is a scholar. So this is its use. Alladhi referring, joining the word arrajulu with jalisun coming after huwa alimun. The man who is sitting is a scholar. Huwa alimun, of course, in his own right, is a sentence on its own. And ghayru aqil al kitabu alladhi ala al maktabi mufidun. Al kitabu alladhi ala al maktabi mufidun. The book which is on the table is useful. Don't throw the book away, it's useful. So the book is useful. I'm saying, which book? The book which is on the table. Okay, which is on the table. And you can see how I've connected the two parts together. And just as a reminder, aqil, we translate as rational. Ghayru aqil, non rational. Few quick examples for you to note. Al waladu alladhi yakra'u. Al Qur'ana Salihun. So Alladhi is singular. Al Waladu is the one is referring back to the boy which or the boy who you reads. This is a verb. 
the Quran. So this is nasab. Why? Because it is the object of the verb. Okay, object of the verb. Salihun. The boy who reads the Quran is pious. A general statement being made. And al kitabu al ala al maktabi lil mudarrisi. Again, I've added a bit more there. You can see al because it's referring back to the book. Ala al maktabi jar majrur. So this is jar. Lil, and then this is a harf of jar as well, and this is therefore this is jar. This is the harf of jar li, and then it joined the word al afterwards. Hamzatul wasal is not written. I've been through this quite a few times, inshallah. The book which is on the table belongs to the teacher or is of the teachers or teacher's book. Hadha al kitabul ladhi, okay? Hadha al kitab al ladhi. This book, this book. So this is your murakkab ishari, okay? Murakkab ishari. Uh, after it is al. And please refer to lesson number 12 for this, if you've forgotten. Alladhi, the one who or that which, okay, Taratuhu, I have read. This is the book which I have read. This is the book which I have read. So again, in English, who, which and who, depending on what you're referring to. Otherwise, in Arabic, it's the same word being used because we can refer to both uh, rational and non-rational. Few quick examples from the Quran. And I'll give you the quick translations, inshallah, so you can see it's been used. Have you seen the one who denies the day of recompense? Okay, so denies the recompense. And this is my favorite example. Who taught by the pen? Who taught by the pen? Again, of course, this is a verb. Who taught by the pen? And then you have Alladhi Yuwaswisu fi Sudurin Nas who whispers in the hearts of mankind. Who whispers in the hearts of mankind? Okay, again another beautiful example. Who Alladhi Khalakakum Aminkum Kafirun. So he is the one who created you, yet some of you are disbelievers. Aminkum Mu'minun and some of you are believers. Some are believers. And Wallahu bima ta'maluna basir. And Allah is all seeing of what you do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to be believers. Allati. We'll look at now Allati, which has been used in the Quran 68 times. It can be used primarily, of course, it's used with singular feminine, but we can use it with. So, uh, we, we can use it with also broken plurals which are treated as singular feminine as well as plurals that are that follow the sound feminine plural as well anyway let's look at three examples hopefully this will now suffice firstly aqil and then we'll look at non-aqil aqil we have at-talibatu at-talibatu meaning the female student allati jalisatun the one who's sitting huna here Okay, salihatun is pious. The student, female, who is sitting here is pious. As far as ghayru aqil, we can refer, let's use the word car. So, as-sayyaratu allati amam al-bayti jadidatun. Again, you can see here, the singular feminine form has been used for the car. And it is exactly as it is. So, the car which is in front of the house is new. So, you can see the use of allati here. Now, what if we had a plural, a plural word? Okay, we still use allati even though it is singular feminine. Why? Because of the rule. The rule is that it can be used non-rational plural. Okay, so we have here al-kutubu, books. Book is masculine. Al-kutubu is a broken plural. Therefore, it is treated as singular feminine. Therefore, al-kutubu allati ala al-maktabi jadidatun. I'm treating it as singular feminine and therefore i need to use allati okay i've been through this rule so many times but inshallah every time you see it it will reinforce this uh non-rational i would say way of thinking but that's how it is uh in arabic right throughout so the book which so this word here which is referring to this one as a translation uh on the table so this is your jar majroor al maktabi jadidatun are new are new so the books are new not the book one book is books plural so again you can see alhamdulillah these three i think was is enough for you to see how different way it is used so alladhi is used with singular masculine rational rational doesn't really matter 
Allati is used with singular feminine. That's what it's meant for. But we can use it with broken plurals of non-rational beings which are treated as singular feminine. So quick examples on the screen. We have here, Alhamdulillah, Albintu, which you can, I'm, see, I'm sure, recognize is the girl. Okay, the girl. Allati taqra'ul Qur'ana dhakiyyatun. And again, I used another example here. The girl who reads the Qur'an is intelligent. The girl who reads the Qur'an is intelligent. As-sayyaratul lati amam al-bayti jamilatun. The car which, which is in front of the house is beautiful. It's a beautiful car. Again, I'm describing as it is. Allati has been used as it is. Al-aqlamu. Again, broken plural pen is masculine. Please note that. Allati ala al-maktabi jadidatun. Singular feminine. The pens that are on the table are new. The pens, plural. Allatheena. Allatheena has been used more than a thousand times in the Quran. It is the most commonly used relative noun. It is predominantly used with the rational masculine plural, the human, etc. And of course, here's one example. Ra'aytu, you've done many, many times as a verb. I saw. Allatheena, those who dhahabu ilal masjidi. I saw those who went towards the mosque. I saw those who went towards the mosque. So if somebody asks you, did you see those who went to the mosque? You can say, I saw Alladina dhahabu ilal masjidi. So you can see how it's used. I've also given you already in the introduction some examples from the Quran. Three more examples to look at. We have whom? Humul mudarrisuna. They were teachers. Alladina whom? Ra'aytu fil masjidi. Whom I saw in the mosque. I'm just giving you simple examples with vocabulary that you can recognize. You can see how it's used. Alladina, those who. Ra'aytu alladina. I saw those who. Dhahabu ila masjid. We've seen this one already. I have seen or I saw those who went towards the mosque. A, a Quranic example for you lastly. Walladina amanu. And this is very frequently repeated in the Quran. Uh, and those who, those who amanu, have believed, wa'amilu, and did, as-salihati, the good deeds, ula'ika, those are the ones, and ula'ika have done in lesson number 12, ashabul jannah, they are the companions of the paradise. So again, you can see the use of both demonstrative uh, nouns here, ula'ika, and of course, alladhina, which is a relative noun. Just a few examples, but as I said, you see it, almost 1,000, more than a 1,000 times, so one on almost every page of Al-Qur'an. Two Qur'anic examples, very famous, inshallah, I hope you can recognize them. Inna alladheena kafaru, those who have disbelieved, so inna indeed, you can see now inna, this will be your ismu inna. Alladheena does not change, so therefore you will not, it will not change due to inna, but it is, mansu, it is mansub because it is ismu inna. Kafaru have disbelieved min ahlil kitabi from the people of the book wal mushrikina and the idol worshippers will be fi nari jahannam in the fire of jahannam khalidina fiha wherein they will dwell forever ulaika they are the ones whom they sharrul bariyah and those are the worst of creations so you can see here very beautiful use of alladina as with inna again one of the things that we learned in lesson 12 one of the particles um inna and our sisters and then we have another example here illa alladheena except for those amanu have believed wa amilu and did as-salihat the good deeds wa tawasaw bil haqqi and advised each other to the truth wa tawasaw bis sabr and advised each other to the patience so two examples where you will see the use of alladhi Again, note them down, please, and also have a look at the examples uh, in the actual surahs of the Quran, and you will be able to get more detail. Non-specific relative nouns. Now, we mentioned earlier there are two types of relative nouns in Arabic. Ones are specific. We've looked at them. Alladhi, alladhina is the most two most important that you need to know, and the feminine allati. Again, apart from that, the others don't worry about it. But there are also words that are used for both purposes. I've seen, shown you this already. Alladhi yusalli mu'minun. And you can see alladhi is used. But ya'lamu ma fis samawati wal ard. He knows ma here is your relative noun. Now, once we've done advanced Arabic, inshallah ta'ala, we will go through 
the uh, different types of ma in Arabic for now. Uh, we've already seen it negate jumla ismiya. And we also ask questions with it. Ma hadha, what is this? And this is another use of it. Non specific man. Just like ma, man can also be used for question. Ma hadha, what is this? Is a question. Ma can also be used for negating jumla ismiya. Ma can also be used with a as a relative noun, which we've seen previously. But man also can be used for many purposes. One of them is to ask question. Okay, manil muallimu, who is the teacher? Manil muallimu, and it's usually used with aqil. Whereas ma can be used with objects and non aqil things in general. But man specifically questioning about aqil. Uh, aqil meaning rational beings. So man, manil muallimu is a question. Man can also be a relative noun and it can be used for singular plural masculine feminine etc has been used in the quran as a relative noun for 650 times so one use is as i said who are you but then the way it's used in a relative noun is i'm the one who taught you so who are you i'm the one who taught you so you can see here the use of who one is a question the other is a relative use now here we see example from the quran qalu, qalu they said Atajalu fiha, are you going to make in it or will you place in it man? Again, now this is your relative noun. Yufsidu fiha wa yasfikud dima. The translation is they said, will you place upon it one who, the one who causes corruption therein and sheds blood? This is from Surah Al Baqarah. So you can see here now the use of man as a relative noun. Inshallah ta'ala, within the context, how it's used, all of that detail will be in advanced Arabic. But for now, we'll simply note that man can be used also as a relative noun. Non-specific relative noun, ma. So again, the use of ma is quite comprehensive in Arabic. So we have a question like ma dinuka, what is your deen? Ma nasartuka, I did not help you. This is negating a verb. You can also negate jumla ismiya with it. Uh, as we have seen in lesson number 12, lesson number 13 in detail, inshallah ta'ala, 13 and 14, I believe, in lesson 14. However, ma can also be used as a relative noun and has been used 1476 times. So very, very commonly used word. So what are you doing? I'm doing what you told me to do. Okay, so ma is used with singular, plural, masculine, feminine, etc. And it can mean what, that, which. These are non-specific ones, so they're quite flexible. You can use masculine, feminine, it doesn't really matter. Ma is generally used, as I said, with um, rational, uh, non-rational, but it can be used also with rational. Anyway, to Allah belongs, okay, to lillahi ma, whatever, fissamawati, whatever's in the he heavens, wa ma, and whatever. Fil Arudi. So the ma here is a relative noun, not for negation. Wa ilallahi turja'ul umur, and all matters are returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, a very beautiful example of the use of ma as a relative noun. Alhamdulillah, that is the conclusion of the lesson. Today, really, we're not going to go into too much depth. As I said, the relative nouns are primarily used with verbal sentences, and therefore we need that, and that leads us on to learning, inshallah ta'ala, what we have in book two to go through further with verbs and so on alhamdulillah by the grace of allah i wanted to finish the whole thing before the start of ramadan in 2024 and inshallah ta'ala get that out there and then be idhnillah after ramadan i will continue to deliver the lessons uh, where we will look into verbs in more detail a series of lessons will come please remember me in your duas uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive my mistakes and give me the ability to complete the task that is in ahead of me reward you for watching i hope and pray you found the lessons of benefit Inshallah ta'ala, I will see you in the next uh, where we'll start learning verbs from book two. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al